Hello there my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this rainbow wire crochet bracelet. Now of course you don't have to use the rainbow colours, that's just what I chose for this one. You can use whatever colours you like, but if you like the bracelet I made here it will be available for sale in my shop. Otherwise if you want to learn how you can make your own, then keep watching. So these are then the materials that we'll need. First of all I'm using a regular round silver coated copper wire and this is a 0.4mm gauge. And then we'll need our beads. So the beads I'm using are 3mm Preciosa bicones. Of course you can use what you want to, but I'm using the colours of the rainbow and again you can really mix and match your colours however you want to. And then we'll need our findings. So I'm using these ribbon ends here to finish off the ends and they have little loops in them where we can attach our clasp. Now I'm using a lobster claw clasp, an extender chain and a couple of jump rings to put it together. Of course you can use whatever kind of clasp you want to or even make your own. And with the ribbon ends we also need some glue so I'm using my E6000 to make it nice and durable. Then the tools we'll need is first of all something to cut our wire so I'm using these flush cutters here, tweezer nose pliers and chain nose pliers to help manipulate the wire and also for the jump rings. And finally and most importantly we need the crochet hook of course so I'm using a 1.25mm hook but it doesn't have to be that specific size just make sure it's a small one. Now you'll be able to find the material list and useful links in the description box down below so feel free to check that out otherwise let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. So for the wire that we're working with I'm leaving it attached to the reel because it's hard to know exactly how much we're going to use and also that way we have minimum weight stitch. So to get started I'm grabbing my crochet hook and then also starting towards the end of the wire and I'm just going to leave a short little tail. Now what you want to do is bring the wire over the top of your finger and then put the crochet hook in between the wire and your finger and then just do one full rotation like that and this is basically going to be our first loop. So now what we need to do is continue making loops and make a full row of the length of the bracelet. So at the beginning here it can be a little bit fiddly because there's not a whole lot to hold on to but just hold on to that little tail the best you can. Then the wire here that I'm working with that's still attached to the reel is coming out towards the back of the loop. Put the crochet hook through the loop there and catch onto that wire and then pull it through towards the front and then to enlarge in that loop you want to push the crochet hook through to this widest point so the shaft before the handle and then just pull it out a little bit as well like that. Then we need to obviously flatten this new loop next to the original one so I'm going to rotate the crochet hook so the hook part is facing fully away from me and then just push it backwards there so it's now laying flat next to the other one and this is basically how we're going to keep going for now so again crochet hook through the loop and then grab onto the wire pull it through to create another loop and then push the hook to that shaft part pull it out a little bit and then rotate it and push it flat and then you can see we now have three loops in total there and you basically want to continue like this you can also see now we're getting a bit more to hold on to it's already getting a bit easier I keep moving my hand up as well to hold Hold on to it right underneath where I'm working. So pull it out a bit, rotate it and flatten it down. That's the fourth one. So just keep going like this until we have the length we need. So now I made my row of loops here. It should look a little something like this. And what I've ended up with is 51 loops in total. So make sure to count them. Now you can obviously make this larger or smaller. What I recommend you do is you do it in sections of two loops. So if you want to make it larger, you could do it for instance 53 or 55 or smaller. Just do it two loops smaller at a time because that way it's going to line up with the rows that we're going to be making. Making. But from here I'm then going to basically do the width of the bracelet. So I'm going to pull the wire through to make another loop and instead of continuing from that last loop, so doing this row, I'm going to bring this loop out to the side and then we can change how we're holding it. So this is going to be one end of the bracelet and then from here this is technically two loops. So this last one that we made in the long row is going to be the corner. So it's two loops on this new row that we're making and then do another one. And really it's up to you how wide you want this. I'm personally going to be making it five loops wide. So that's four and then we need to make the last one. So if you want it wider you can obviously make more loops or narrower you can make less. And from here we need to move back up the other side to make the equivalent row as the very first long one that we did. So bring the wire through, make another loop and this one also needs to go out to the side. So this is now another corner. So this is one end of the bracelet. Change direction again, how you're holding your piece and then you just want to work your way upwards on this side. So we have two loops and then we have the third one just made. Bring that down flat next to the others and keep going like this so we make another row equivalent to the first one. So I'll now reach the other end of this row here as well and then 
it's going to start to look a little something like this. Now what you want to do is make the same amount of loops on this row as the first one. So that is 51 in my case here and you might find that they don't seem to be exactly the same length. That isn't as important as the amount of loops so just make sure you're making the same amount of loops. That's the most important thing. But then from here we just need to make the final row. So that's the other end which is five loops in my case equivalent to the other end. So go sideways again. So that's two on this row. Three, four, and the fifth one. Now we have the complete frame here, but obviously it's still open. So what we need to do is connect it together. So make sure you go through all of them here. So we have it not twisted at all, all the way to the other end to the very first loop. And if you make sure it's not twisted, we then need to stay through the very final loop and then also take the crochet hook through the very first loop because that is gonna be a connection point which is gonna end up then completing the whole frame. And to connect it, all we're gonna do is another loop so bring the wire through both of those loops there and in this case just go through the very next loop so that's the second one that we originally made so we're moving to the side again so this connection point is going to be a corner and now that we have the frame in place it's time to start making the rows in the middle so again I'm just going to change how I'm holding the piece and then I've moved up one on the side here so I've made two loops you could say the second layer so this is the second loop from the corner I'm going to pull my wire through and go through the third loop and this is where I'm going to start making my first row. So pull down another loop and then instead of continuing on top of the other loops there I'm going to then bring this out to the side but making sure I go in the direction so I'm in the middle of the frame. So we have this loop kind of sticking out to the side by itself and then from there I'm going to make a row so I can get all the way to the other side of the frame. So that's two loops, three and then the fourth one here. So this is the amount we need to make to reach the other side. So basically it's going to be equivalent to the very ends. Now the first loop technically is the one that's in this side of the frame but then after that we'll make four. So you could say in total it's five just like the ends and then with this very last loop I'm going to bring that through the third loop on the opposite side there. So it's going straight across from one side to the other. So we basically have one loop in between the two rows in the middle, one of them being the end. Then pull another loop through and that's going to connect it like that. Now we need to come back down again. So that loop that pull through I'm going to turn my crochet hook and come back down through the previous loop and then pull that tight now pull another loop through go through the next loop so we made the row connected it and now we're working our way back down that row in the middle to get back down to the original side of the frame and then we need to make the last one here and go down through the frame again there we go now what I just want to mention as well is at any point if you feel like the loops aren't quite neat enough with each other for instance up here I feel that like this one is a little bit loose you can just put your crochet hook through again and kind of straighten out the loops so you can always go back through and do that at any point where you feel like it's necessary like that but then back to the new loop here so I'm going through the frame again now I actually have three loops on top of each other pull the wire through to create a new one and this time we're going to be going to the very next loop in the frame go through that pull the wire tight so the loops aren't too loose, the new ones that we make. And this is where we need to get to the next point in the frame to create the next row in the middle. So every time I'm going to be skipping one loop and then going through the next one is where I'm then going to bring the new loop inwards to make the next row. So you can see that single loop is just kind of hanging out inside of the frame. That is how we're going to make the next row just like we did the first one. So that is one loop and two loops, the third one and then the fourth and final one. Obviously technically it's five if you include the loop from the frame itself but then the last loop we need to go through the frame on the other side so from the previous row that we made we need to skip one loop and then go through the one after it and then just pull the wire tight, make a new loop to connect, rotate your piece so we can go back downwards on the same row one loop at a time and work our way back down to the other side of the frame, just like this, get into the loop in the frame, go through that, then work your way to the side again, so we can get to the next point of making the next row, but you can start to see the pattern here. So we're basically making a row and then skipping a loop, making a row, skipping a loop. So there's gonna be a bit of space between all of the rows. So just keep doing this until we make our way all the way down to the other end. So now I made my very last row in the middle. You can see I don't have any more loops left to make any more. So what I'm just gonna do now is 
bring out another loop and continue going over the loops in the frame here. So just go to the very next one, bring out another loop, go to the very next one, which is the corner one in this case. And then basically what we need to do now is just follow this frame all the way around to help reinforce it more. So just go from one loop to the next and it's the same when we get to the other side here where we connected the rows in the middle. Just go through the loops in the same way. So now I made it all the way to the other end here and I've ended up where we started out making the rows going across the middle. So technically now we've made the same amount of layers you could say around the frame whereas if we go over this bottom part one more time this will have an extra layer than the rest of it so you can stop here which is what i'm going to do you can also go around and do another layer if you prefer if you feel like it needs it but i do recommend going all the way around again to the opposite side and ending back up here so that's even layers all the way around but now we're done with the crochet so what i've done is i've cut off my length of wire from the reel and i've just left a length of about one meter that's still attached here rather have too much than too little though so I'm at this corner I'm just going to pull the wire through to kind of make another loop but instead of then carrying on around the frame I'm going to pull this all the way through so the end comes out and then just to fasten this final loop in place because you can see that's a bit loose I'm going to take the end and just go down through the wire crusher that I've made in the frame here so I'm going through the next loop and make sure you go in between the wires and it's going to blend in nicely because of all the wire crusher we already have and then just pull that down so it gets nice and tight and then it kind of fastens that corner loop in place but then I'm going to use this length of wire here to add in the beads so I just want to get in position first of all now I'm only going to be adding beads to the rows inside of the frame so in the middle running along of course you can also add beads to the frame itself that's up to you but i'm then going to go back up through the loop and make sure that the wire is wrapped around within the loops because otherwise it will just pull through but then what i need to do is get to the very first row here i'm skipping the very outer one because we're going to clamp on our ribbon ends and obviously we don't want beads within that as it's going to crush them but i'm going to reach the very first one here so again, bring the wire down through, make sure to pull it tight. And then I just want to make sure my wire comes towards the front here. So I'm going up through the loop that's in the frame at the very end of the inner row. So it's technically at the very beginning of this row here, but I'm only gonna be adding beads on the inner part of the row. So not on the actual outer part of the frame. And like I have mentioned, I'm gonna be doing it in the rainbow colors. So I just need to get my beads ready. So I'm going to start with my red ones and just take in one at a time. My wire is in position so I need to add my bead onto the wire and let that drop all the way down and then to fasten it I'm going to take the tip of the wire and go through the middle loop there because when I then pull this tight that's going to make the bead sit on top of the very first loop of the inner three ones there so not including the frame one but make sure then it sits sideways like that so the side of the bead is facing outward and then just pull that tight now to be able to add a bead to the very next loop I'm going to come up through the loop that we just added the bead on top of so come up through there but making sure when I pull it tight that I push down on the bead gently and then pull the wire tight so this bead doesn't get loose now we're in position for the next bead so add that to the wire let it drop all the way down same principle then go through the next loop which is the last one of the three in the middle here on this row pull that down tight so this bead ends up sitting again sideways on top of that middle loop so the beads are going to end up sitting right next to each other and then come up through the loop where we just place the bead on top of make sure the bead is tight and then hold it down gently with your finger and we'll pull the wire up so that fastens it in place and then the final bead add it to the wire let it drop down and go through and pull that tight and make sure the bead is going to sit sideways on top of that final loop so we have the three beads sitting right next to each other now we need to make our way to the next row and i'm just going to do that by going along the outer frame going from one loop to the next kind of stitching in and out of the loops until we then can get in proper position to add the next row of beads which is coming up through the loop here that's at the very end of the next row that's in the frame and for this row it's obviously going to be the orange color so I'm going to bring in those beads and then put the first bead onto my wire let it drop down and same principle we need to add this bead on top of the very first loop of the three in the middle so I'm just going to go down through the very middle one and then make sure the bead is going to end up sitting sideways on top 
top of the loop, come up through that same loop where the bead is sitting on. And as we pull the wire tight, make sure to hold the bead in place. The wire is now ready for the next bead. So add that on, let it drop down, go down through the third loop on this row here within the frame. Again, make sure the bead sits sideways, come up through that same loop where the bead is on and then add in the final bead so we can complete this row and just go down through the loop that's in the outer frame. So the very end of this row. And there we go. That is now these three beads added, the orange color. And now we want to make our way to the next row here. So as you can see, we're kind of snaking our way through the rows, adding in the beads. And we just want to keep going like this. So make your way to the next row, the outer loop then the frame and add whatever beads that you want to add and keep doing that all the way until we reach the other end. So now I added in all the beads here and I've reached the other end. What we've got to do now is get rid of the excess lengths of the weaving wire. So you just want to turn it to the back where the wire is coming out and then just find a place where you can wrap this around a couple of times. So I just want to wrap it around a single wire within the wire crochet that we already made. So put it through and pull it tight all the way and then just go through that same place again. So we're basically coiling this wire around a wire that's already in the piece just a couple of times. Just going to do one more, pull that tight and then I'm just bringing it around as if I'm doing another wrap but instead of actually doing the wrap I'm going to cut off the excess like that and then you'll be able to feel a little end of the wire now to tuck that away i'm just going to grab my tweezer nose pliers and just roll it in the direction that the wrap is going so it gets tucked into the wire crochet and that's how to get rid of the wires of course you just want to do the same with the one on the other end as well and then to finish off the ends here i'm going to be using my ribbon end and put over the end and clamp it down but to be able to do that and have it be durable i'm going to also use my e6000 glue so i'm just going to open that up and take a little bit out on a toothpick and then i want to add that inside of the ribbon end just cover the inside walls you don't have to fill it up completely and then what i have left on my toothpick Pick. I like to just put on the actual end of the bracelet as well and just make sure it goes right in between all the wires there in the nooks and crannies both on the front and back because then we'll put the two pieces together and the glue dries they're going to really adhere nicely then I'm putting the ribbon end right on the end of the piece and then using my chain nose pliers I'm clamping this down so I like to hold it in my hand and put a finger on either side to hold it in place and I like to just do it gradually so go from side to side to make sure it stays in place and when I'm almost all the way down I just like to remove my fingers, make sure it's still in the middle. Double check it if you're happy with where it sits and you can always move it if it's slid a little bit. Otherwise, clamp it all the way down, nice and tight. And also, I like to go in from the sides and just close them up nicely as well. And then, obviously, you need to leave the glue to dry. Of course, repeat the same on the other end as well. And you have these little loops where you can attach your findings. And then once you've added your clasp, it's time to shape the bracelet. Now, it is a soft bracelet, so it will naturally shape it around your wrist. But I do like to just encourage it a little bit to make it sit nicely so as you can see from just using the clasp it will look a little bit funky so I'm just going to gently shape it how it would nicely sit around the wrist until it looks a little something like that and then you have your finished bracelet ready to wear so you have this really cute and elegant rainbow that you can wear around your wrist made just using wire crochet so if you want to check out other wire crochet designs I have a playlist on my channel I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below otherwise I really hope you enjoyed this one thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one